um, Rudy's, you know, dynamic role behind the defense put a lot of pressure on our bigs to really step up and try to help. So they really walked down the lane um, a lot in that first quarter. Um, I thought in the second quarter when we started switching and um, changing up our defense a little bit, um, they did a really good job. You know, got down, um, I think, 18 in that first half, and um, we decided to switch a little bit. We got our starters back in. Um, they played a lot of minutes in that first half, and um, we cut it to one and then ended up going back to nine at the half and then came out second half. They went up 19. We came back, cut it to two or three. So I was just proud of our fight. You know, we couldn't make shots. Um, shots wasn't falling for us tonight, but we just continue to keep defending and keep grinding. So I'm proud of my team for that. Thanks, uh, thank you, Jamie. Ty, next question will come from Andrew Greif from the LA Times. Hey, Ty. Uh, obviously, Gobert is such a presence inside, and he's always going to be um, someone who's going to deter drives and whatnot. But Considering you guys had so much success shooting in the paint this season, what kept you guys from kind of replicating that tonight against that Utah defense? Um, I thought we missed some chippies around the basket. Um, you know, Kawhi got a lot of great mid-range shots that he usually makes when he gets into the paint area. But then we kicked it out for three when they doubled Kawhi. Um, PG had three or four wide open threes, you know, in the first half that, you know, they was leaving. And I don't know why, but um, we weren't able to knock down. So. Uh, we got the shots we wanted to get, you know, especially with Gobert clogging the paint up. I thought we did a good job of popping surge. I'm um, looking for him if he didn't have it getting to the second side. Um, but he does have a big presence in that paint when he's trying to drive. Thanks, Ty. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Ty, next question is going to come from uh, Justin Russo. Go ahead, Justin. Hey, Coach. Uh, the team fought back twice, once in the second quarter and again in the fourth to give themselves a chance in a game that they were shooting poorly. What did it tell you about the team to see them fight like this despite the result? Um, just our grittiness. I think being gritty and, you know, still competing to, to, to the um, last horn sounds. And that's all we can ask. You know, you're not going to make shots every night, um, but we kept defending. Um, we kept, you know, playing the right way. And we just couldn't get shots to fall, like you said. So um, it just says a lot about just trusting what we're trying to do, um, the process and, what we're trying to do offensively and defensively. And they executed, you know, pretty well defensively. And I just thought our offense, you know, not making shots hurt us. Thank you, Justin. Uh, next uh, question, uh, Tomer. Go ahead, Tomer. Hey, Ty, I I'm just curious, what went into the, I guess, uh, decision-making to pull Pat out? Because he had a really good first half, plus minus-wise he was dominating. But you pulled him early in that third quarter and got Lou in there. He was tired. He asked, what's up? <laughs> You know, we, we, you know, we played our starters a lot of extra minutes that we usually try to, you know, but the game was getting out of hand, so we threw our starters back in to try to at least make a game of it before halftime. And we were able to do that. And, um, you know, we kind of overplayed Pat, Kawhi, and PG in that first half, but that's what we needed to do. And um, the start of that third quarter, he got he got tired like in two and a half, three minutes, so we had to get him out. And we brought Lou in um, for Pat. You finding conditioning to be a bit of a, a work in progress right now, or you guys, you like where you're at? Um, I don't know. It's, it's day to day. It just depends on how many games we have and how many nights and, you know, back to back, you know, playing in the altitude, altitude up here in Utah or if we're in Denver. So it all varies. You know, you never know on a night to night base, basis. So uh, we just got to play it by ear and by feel. And like I said, PG was, I mean, um, Pat Beverly was playing great and uh, he got tired early in the third, I mean, early in the third quarter. So, you know, he has to come out. Thanks. Uh, next up, Cameron. Go ahead, Cameron. Hey, Coach. Uh, i got a question about your assist total tonight. You had 19 assists. This is your second lease uh, of the season. Did that have an impact on your shot making, you believe? No. Uh, how many shots did we make? I can't remember. Uh, what were you? Uh, 51, I think. Um could have made 51. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Coach. I had that stat ready for me. I had that stat up and ready to go. You made 33 shots tonight. Yeah, so 19 assists on 33 shots, you know, is pretty good. And I thought we got a lot of shots that, like you said, we didn't make um, throughout the course of the game. So um, I got to look at the film, but I thought we played the right way. I thought we shared the basketball. Guys got open looks, and we just didn't make tonight. Okay, and what do you think about uh, your thoughts on Michael Conley and his effectiveness tonight? He was great. You know, he was special. I thought we did a great job on, on Donovan, um, just showing him different coverages, try to keep him off balance. Uh, we did a great job on Bogdanovich. Um, but, you know, I thought Conley and um, 
and angles really hurt us. Angles off the bench really hurt us. Uh, getting downhill, I think he got seven or eight assists, you know, seven or eight rebounds. And then Conley's shot making early on, you know, really changed the game for them. So um, we did a good job on pretty much everybody else, but Conley was the one that really, really hurt us. That's all for tonight, Ty. Thank you for your time and uh, have a great flight. Yes, sir. Thank you.